five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble and it goes on from now until midnight Eastern Time on the East Coast of the United States and we'll get to our Citizens Panel a little bit later but of course uh, we got to talk to our old friend. Ladies and gentlemen, we go out to the other coast of the United States of America where we check in with our old friend Larry Bubbles Brown. Yay! Yay! Yay. How are you? Oh, uh, yeah, just rolling along here, working with greats of comedy. Life couldn't be better. The greats of comedy? Who? I worked with, uh, do you remember Jimmy J.J. Walker from hey, Good Times? Well, you should have said hello for me because he was my. Uh, this good. Did I ever tell you this? No. Oh. I worked at WMCA in New York doing a talk show. And I had what they call a board op, or in those days we'd call them engineers, the guys that run the board. And uh, it was Jimmy J. Walker. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So Jimmy and I go all the way back to then. So. Well, he was, uh, he kind of downplays it, but he that show was huge. That's when TV had enormous audiences, and it was just, that'll never happen again. Oh, yeah, and he was huge. Yeah. Uh, and what was funny is he used to say to me, hey, listen, I'm, you know, I, do, I do comedy. Why don't you come down and see me at the club? You know? And I always meant to, but I never did because I had a great fear that then I would see him, and then he would say, what did you think? And it probably would have sucked. Uh, so I never <laughs> went. Uh, little did I know, you know, that he would turn out to be what he turned out to be. A few years later, when I was at uh, Sirius, he came on the program, and oh. he remembered me. And uh, you know, we he told stories about you know what went on and stuff I didn't even remember. So, yeah, he's a good guy, and uh, I just remember that show. I didn't think it was particularly funny, but I remember it was huge at the time, and I think. Uh, I think Letterman and Leno were writers on that show. Perhaps. Uh, you know, they were they were all writing at that time because they couldn't get jobs on TV or wherever. Right. Um, in fact, um, I think it was Jim, it, no, I don't know if Jimmy Walker was ever a writer for Letterman. Um, but no, Letterman Letter was a writer for Jimmy Walker. Yeah. Uh, yes, he was. You're right. I had it, see? And, uh, and, and to the e end of his show, uh, Letterman would always have Jimmy on every now and then. You know, He would have on a certain group of people that were his old pals, his, his old cronies from the comedy store. And um, he, yeah, he was very loyal to them. Very he loyal. was loyal to his friends, and uh, Leno, unfortunately, didn't have many comics on. Well, there was one. Uh, there was one comedian. I'm trying to remember his name now. Who died? But he had a long-term disease, and Letterman kept paying the bills. Uh, George Miller. George Miller. Right. Right. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, he very loyal guy. You know, the funny part about Letterman is uh, he never wanted anybody to know that he did nice stuff. Uh, and the fact was, he did nice, nice stuff. Uh, and uh, he, uh, you know, would, for instance, uh, when 9-11 happened, uh, there was a fire department on the corner that lost, like, uh, quite a number of people in that situation. And he sent down food and clothing and everything. And he, but he didn't want anybody to know. You know, he didn't do his good works uh, for publicity. 
Yeah. You know how most people would go out and say, and I gave money to the fire guys down the street, blah, 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 blah. Look what a great guy I am. <laughs> Letterman, in fact, told certain people who we did nice things, this is what I'm told, who did nice things for, that if they ever told anybody that he had done that charity, that he would stop giving to it. Wow. Yeah. So uh, Letterman's philanthropy, which was not small, it was quite m maximum, uh, was, was largely unheralded because he didn't want anybody to know. And uh, I, th I think that, 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 that speaks well for the guy, you know, that you do good works because it makes you feel good, not because you, you know, um, uh, because you want publicity out of it. Right, so, right. Yeah. Look at me, what a good guy I am. Yeah. So you Letterman will go down in uh, TV history as the second best late night host probably uh i would say so you know i mean when we're talking about quality you know, we're not talking about being a hit because he wasn't uh he, he, leno pretty much had the numbers throughout all those years yeah um but uh, uh, he he will go down, I think, as being one of the best. He certainly, I would say, would go down in history as the last of the traditional talk show hosts. Um, because uh, what he did was the traditional talk show. Nobody does. Fallon doesn't do it anymore. I mean, Fallon does nothing but, uh, you know, let's play pie in the face, you yeah. know. <laughs> And these uh, actors and actresses lower their dignity to play these stupid fucking games, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, <laughs> that's what made that's what made, has made this guy a hit. And I, uh, I, uh, you know, he's really he was he's really been a. I think he's terrible personally. I think he's just horrible. Uh, and it's not in the tradition. You know who's in the tradition of Letterman is is uh, Kimmel. Mm -hmm. Kimmel's very much, much the traditional late night show host, you know, um, and Letterman was his idol when he was growing up. So, um, you know, it turned out, uh, you know, the, the, he so he he is really the successor to Letterman, in in that nobody else is. I mean, Colbert, come on, give me a break. Colbert's terrible, just terrible. Yeah, how long is that gonna last? And, and I hear he's a fucking asshole anyway. So. Oh really? <laughs> oh yeah. I, I hear that he's not uh, considered too terribly nice. You know. Yeah. So uh, you know that's that uh, that's what that one is all about. Uh, you know I uh, but I I think that if I had to if I had to look at great talk show hosts the greatest one of all time to me okay was Jack Parr. Yeah, you're right. I was going to say Cars, but Parr, you're right. Parr is, yeah, Parr was better than Carson, but he wasn't as successful as Carson. Um, uh, uh, Carson was great. I mean, one night, I'll tell you, I was, I was out, I remember uh, when I was out of work at uh, Live 105, I would stay up late at night. If I, if I didn't have to get up early in the morning, I would stay up till four in the morning. Okay, couldn't go to sleep, uh, or I would write, or I would do something, or I was out doing something, and uh, so I found myself out of work. And um, one night I'm sitting there and I tune in Johnny Carson, and I start watching him, and I say, "This guy is the guy to watch to learn from." You know. Mm -hmm. This, I was amazed at the virtuosity of Carson, how perfectly he had that job down. Uh, and I, um, so I, I admired him for that. I just went, wow, you know, he's terrific. Um, but my idol was Jack Parr, who I felt best exemplified what a talk show host should be. You know, uh, and it's a combat. 
And it's a combination of that when all is said and done, the show is about him, you know, and about his little adventures or his gripes or something that happened to him today or whatever. And then there was the guests. And he was just a great interviewer of guests because he let them go. He let them perform. He was terrific. He was just the best. Yeah, but like you said, I think nobody opened up about personally like he did. That was oh, no, he, he taught me. The which art is what you did later. Yeah, but the art of burying your soul. Yeah. I, I and I know people find that difficult to believe that that's that that was the thing, but he it was difficult. It, he would bear his soul to the public. You know, um, this is what's bothering me today. This is my pain and my anguish today. And uh, he also was able to create heat behind him. Like there was a time when he was doing his show and he told a joke about a WC, which is a British term for water closet, which is a British term for toilet. And he told this joke about WC something. It was about it, and it was a British joke. And uh, NBC censored it because they didn't want the word toilet on the air or any relationship to toilet on the air. And Parr went on the air the next night and said, you know what they did last night? They censored me for a British term meaning bathroom. That's how he put it. He said, I don't put up with this kind of uh, censorship. That's it for me. This is my last show. Goodbye. He walked off. And he walked. And he finished the show. You know. Oh, yeah. I don't, did he finish it? Wow. He finished it. And then the next day, he wasn't there. And they didn't know where he was. I think he traveled to some foreign country or something. He just got out of Dodge. He quit on the air. That's great. And NBC was looking for him and begging him to come back. And uh, he finally did. Uh, about three weeks later, he came back. But in that ensuing period, he was a headline every day in the newspapers. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a big story. So. That, that's that, right? Yeah, well, yeah. that's. Uh, he was amazing, and he he was uh, he was a great interviewer, and you know I learned a lot by watching Jack Parr, and and Parr is one of the influences of who I am now. You know, this wearing your heart on the sleeve. I took to I probably took it too much to heart. You know. Did it maybe a little too extensively, like I'll tell you every time I'm not feeling well, <laughs> you know. But uh, but I but I did that, and in fact, I walked off my show in San Francisco. I don't I know. Remember if that? You remember it? Were you there? I wasn't there, but I remember. It. I think you 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 were like Par. You left the state. <laughs> didn't you? I said I, it, something was going on, and I don't know. I had some comedian on that was just horrible. And I just said, I think I've taken about as much as I can take of this job. <laughs> I said, there isn't enough money in the world to help have me keep going on like we're going on today. And I, 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 turned, I think I turned the show over to Lori. And I just said, goodbye, everybody. And I got in the car and I left. You went to Oregon. I, I, I went, well, I went, no, I went to upstate New York, uh, upstate California. Okay. Up near Klamath Falls because I knew some people up there. And I just disappeared. Even even my business manager, Gary, I think I called and said I just quit on the air. And I then I said I'll see you in a couple of days. <laughs> uh, and I disappeared and they didn't know where to find me. You know, and... Um, Finally, I think at some point I came to my senses because <laughs> at that point I was making like about three hundred thousand dollars a year at that place, mm -hmm. and I, I I I I said to myself, "What are you, a fucking idiot?" <laughs> you know, and who else? Who's going to hire you after you've done this? You know. So I uh, I then uh, I kept checking my phone and my boss. 
I, I think it was Ed Cramp at the time, kept calling, kept calling, kept calling. Where are you, Alex? Alex, we need to talk to you. We need to talk this out, blah, blah, blah. And finally, I called him back. I said, what? And he said, come back. And I said, okay, I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> I think I played it kind of coy, like, well, I don't know if I should. Please come back. And well, I should remember that. I forget how long you're off the air. I think maybe a week. You know, but if I think about it, if I were to now go back and suss it all out, number one, it was a stupid thing to do. But, uh, but more, uh, and it had an effect on other people. I mean, I liked Ed a lot, my, bit, my general manager, and uh, he had to put up with it. Uh, and... Um, but if I think about it, I was probably channeling Parr. Yeah. You know, uh, and what he had done. And, uh, you know, I don't know that it got me a great deal of publicity. Do you remember? Did it get publicity anywhere? Oh, people were definitely talking about it. They were it. talking yeah, about it. Where's Alex? <laughs> I can't. Uh... <laughs> This is bringing back memories. I'd love to know who the comic was. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to remember. I mean, it was just, he was just so bad, you know, and it was just, nothing was happening, and it was just, it was, I, and I just went, I don't need this, you know? I mean, I'm, and, and when I came back, I think I suddenly became more particular about who I had come into the studio, you know, and be on the air with me. Yeah. Well, I think anyone that does morning radio, I'm surprised more people don't just snap. Those hours just make you uh, can make you psychotic. Well, it, it, the hours never got to me. I, you know, although I'm a night person, uh, you know, because you're either when you're born, you're either put into a diurnal, which is daytime, or a nocturnal uh, pattern. And my father, being a musician, I got put in a nocturnal pattern. Mm -hmm. So I was always, my mother would keep me up till 2 in the morning so I could see my dad when he came home from a gig. You know, so I, I really uh, was a, a, have always been a nocturnal person. Uh, uh, and if it, so when I would do that show, which was a morning show, uh, I would force myself to go to sleep at like 11 o'clock at night. I would get a nap in the afternoon and then six hours of sleep at night, okay? Thereby giving me my total of eight hours. And uh, it was always unnatural to me because the minute that I was out of work, let's say when they fired me at Live 105, all of a sudden the next day I was up till four in the morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because my body is a nocturnal body, right. you know. So, now is your body nocturnal or? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm like, I tend to. I like to go to bed between two and three and get up between ten and eleven. So. That's that's exactly what I do. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, and and um, uh, of course you get up early for me, don't you? I get, no, I'm I'm up by I'm generally up by the time you call. So. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, so I, you know, I, I, I uh, drink coffee a lot and uh, I try to wake up. And it seems now as I get older, I'm tired most of the time. So, you know, uh, just sitting around here waiting for death. You, know? <laughs> you and me both. I feel tired all the time, too. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, screw it, you know. Uh, it, 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 the Green Reaper, Reaper is looking for me, you know. I had an Think image about of the, it more and more. I had the uh, image of the Grim Reaper with a scythe over my over my shoulder like yesterday. Going. Well, I think uh, I was going to ask you uh, somebody uh, was some England who was some guy who died in England on stage a couple weeks ago. And really? Yeah, and then I was thinking, I looked it up, there, uh, I googled people that have died on stage, there's like 77 or something. Well, uh, uh, because performers keep performing till they're really old. You know, it's not a, it, it, at least in the old days, it wasn't something that age claimed. I mean, 
we all, the classic one, of course, was uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the guy who was in the producers, uh, Dick Sean. Dick Sean, who died while on stage. He was doing his act, and he just collapsed and fell to the ground. And had a heart attack. People thought it was part of the act, and nobody did it. They all started. They all started laughing, and nobody went over to help because they figured it was all part of the act. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't. He was dead. <laughs> <laughs> but you know something? He was lucky. You know, he went in the middle of doing something he loved. Mm-hmm. You know, I assume he loved comedy. He did it so long. You know. Now he was great. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. That's part of my death rattle. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you the story that I I had a friend had a friend Marshall Efron, who was an actor and comedian, basically known in New York City. You know, those were the days when people had local fame but not necessarily national fame. And uh, if I showed I, I I could show you Marshall. He's been in several films and so on. Fat guy. I don't know if he's still alive. Even I haven't even looked him up. But he was doing. He had waited for for years to get on the Dick Cavett show. He wanted to do the Dick Cavett show because it was the only. I think at that time it was the only uh, New York City talk show. I think Carson had already moved to the West Coast. So if you lived in New York, you wanted to do the Cavett show, and he got his debut on the Cavett show and Dick uh, uh, introduces him and he uh, uh, does his stuff and they laugh and giggle and everything and now it's time for the second guest and the second guest is a guy Rodell who owned a prevention magazine I think it was which was a health magazine Mm -hmm. and um, uh, they're, they're sitting there all talking and and uh, Efron is doing some of his comedy stuff while Rodell is there. And all of a sudden, they hear this gurgle. <laughs> <laughs> and they look over, and Rodell is dead. What they were hearing was a death rattle, which is a sound that the body makes as you're dying. He died, and he hit uh, the subject of his lecture when he was on the Cavett show was how to stay in good health. <laughs> <laughs> and he dropped dead right next to Marshall Efron. And I often asked Marshall, I said, well, how, how did you feel? He said, it was horrid. He said, you're talking and all of a sudden this guy next to you drops dead. He said, but you know what was even worse? I said, what? Well, they never ran the show. So he got screwed up. And because they considered him a jinx, they never invited him back. Oh, really? (laughs) Wow. Yeah. It was like, you would think they would say, well, come back tomorrow or come back next week or we'll set you up for another day. No, they didn't want him back. He was bad luck. (laughs) This guy, Rodell, dies. Boom. That's it. That's all she wrote. Fuck you. You, you know, and, but fuck him. He wrote a book on how, how on good health and needing herbs and spices and you know whatever, and then he dies. And, you know, it's yeah, kind of like but I, 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 it, the happiest day of my life was when Jim Fix keeled over and died. <laughs> this was a guy. In case people don't remember Jim Fix who had a whole business based on his uh, thing, Jim Fix on running. And he was a big runner, and he would run like crazy. And he would say how you could stay healthy through running. And one day he went out running, had a heart attack, and died. <laughs> that, and I cheered. I literally <laughs> fucking cheered because I considered him so goddamn obnoxious. You know. Don't forget Yule Gibbons. Yule Gibbons. Uh, remind me, he was the naturalist, right? He was the naturalist. He was like, yeah, I think he did commercial for granola bars, but he yeah, come he, out eating, you can eat pine cones. You can eat wood chips. Like yeah, wood chips for dinner. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
They are nutritious. A, a healthy eating, and then Yule Gibbons died, of course. I think <laughs> I think it's wonderful when those guys die. I don't know why. <laughs> I just you know I just relish in it. They 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 live this perfectly healthy life, and then what did they get out of it in the end? Death, you know. So. I think you, uh, I think we've mentioned this before, but the first man to walk on the moon didn't exercise because he felt you have a finite number of heartbeats. I I don't know that I don't disagree with him, you know, but apparently some people have less or more. I don't know. Hey, <laughs> listen, we've kind of run out of time here, Bubs. It's been very uplifting talk about death. <laughs> we always love ta talking about death. Death is my subject with you. Oh, I would love to see that Cabot show, God. Yeah, well, you'll never see it. Uh, I'm sure it's somewhere in a vault, and, and Cabot is never letting it out. <laughs> anyway, talk to you next week, Bobs. Good talk to you, sure. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, and that's Larry, and that's Bubs. That's our old friend Larry Bubbles Brown. We love him. You love him too, don't you? Huh? Come on, admit it. You love him. Yeah, I love. I just, you know, he just. It's just somebody to talk to for a half hour. It's not an interview. It's uh, just, uh, you know, kind of like hanging out, two friends, chewing the fat, as it were. So anyway, uh, I'm turning on the uh, Skype lines. Uh, you know, I've been doing this show for better or for worse for the last couple of weeks. While my machine was out being fixed, it wound up in, I think it's Houston, Texas, uh, uh, to be fixed by Apple. And now I see online that it is being readied for shipment back here. So hopefully I will have it tomorrow or the next day. But I still have to, like, take the backup drive and reinstall everything that was on that drive, which doesn't take that long. But then I don't know if I want to plug it in and maybe not be able to do a show. Maybe I will try that and just warn you that the next night I might not go on because I might not be ready. But we'll, we'll, we'll take it a step at a time. Meanwhile, I got this machine down here, the cheese grater, we call it, and uh, we're hoping that it will... It will uh, 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 be a lot uh, better. Oh, here, somebody's calling already. Yep, it's Phil Meyer, ladies and gentlemen. We got him on the line first of all. Let me uh, let me uh, uh, put him on. Uh, let's see here. There we go. I found him. Okay, and he's the first one to go on. And let's see what happens here. There we go. There is. Uh, there's Phil. Hi, Phil. Uh, hi. How you doing? Uh, you know, I I don't want to I don't want to talk on this machine. I want I want the new machine. You know. I, I don't, well, I don't want this, this one, old this machine. one uh, we have to warn people. I I turned it into a a, a different thing, so maybe it'll uh, it'll be uh, better. Uh, yeah. I I I, I uh, am having it uh, do a different way of recording. So that maybe it won't use up that much, okay? All right. So, you know, let me see here. Where, where is uh, first? We got to get a picture on Charlie Wallace before I can make him part of the citizen panel. Uh, Charlie, there you are. Okay. Hello. Now let's see. Are you here yet? No, you're not on the list yet. Hold on a second. Charlie, do he's doing a show on the old machine. Do we really, really want this? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we yeah. have to, well, we do it on the old machine because we can. <laughs> you know, I mean, right. it's what they call the old cheese grater. But I was watching something online uh, last night on uh, YouTube about uh, the, the Mac Pro. And w the, the whole argument about the Mac Pro is that uh, they feel that it's not as good as the cheese grater was in many ways because the cheese grater... You could like put stuff in and so on, you know. Uh, That's and, true. And 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 this one you can't. So. But Apple doesn't want you putting stuff in anything. Well, they don't like you putting stuff in anything. Hello right. there. Uh, uh, we've just been joined by Jeff. Okay. I know. And I'm still in sync. Okay. So we'll 
We'll just wait and see how many people it takes to put me out of sync. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Let me get rid of that. And let me get rid of that. There we go. And let me get rid of that. Okay, so then we have to add those later on. Anyway, uh, no, the cheese grater, in case people don't know, there was an apple they made that had a whole bunch of holes in it. They call it the cheese grater. <laughs> It, it looks like Parmesan you, out of it. It, it looks like you can actually probably take some cheese and grate it yeah, on, on the damn thing. But then again, you would really fuck up the machine. So, you know, I, you know, I don't want to deal with but that. But you have a hell of a pizza. Yeah. And this machine, I got to tell you, because everything is replaceable in it. If tomorrow the, the, uh, the power supply goes out, I just order a new power supply. Boom. Just It's all modular. Right? It's too bad you can't upgrade the board. The trash so can. can. Show them the trash can again, so they All can right. see what we're yeah. what we're talking about. That's that's the machine I got. That's called the trash can. What I was right going to do that. with it, by the way, was if I couldn't get it fixed, I was going to keep it and put dirt in the top of it, and put a plant in there. Um, but it, and, and that's a very powerful machine, but it's not modular. In other words, you don't have hard drives you can put in it. With this thing, with the cheese grater, I can put in memory, I can remove memory, I can put in new CPUs, I can do everything with it. So what I'm thinking of doing is playing around with this and making it into a better machine. But time will tell. Anyway, so how, how, how uh, were your weekends uh, 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 fun? Yeah. Yeah, mine yeah. wasn't at all. No, well, what'd you do? Huh? I did nothing. I did nothing. Uh, uh, I, I yesterday I had a follow up appointment at the guy the place where they pulled my tooth. I don't know what they needed to follow up on yet. Yeah, still gone, you know. Uh, and uh, I uh, well, they, did they give it to you hmm? so you can put it under the pillow for the tooth fairy? You know they. You know something. I really think they should give you the tooth. And here's the yeah. reason why they should give you the tooth. It's yeah. yours. There's a crown on that tooth. That it, it's has worth got, a buck if your mother sees well, it. Well, it's pillow. got it's got to be worth something. Oh. Well, especially know. if it's got gold in it. Huh? Yeah. You know, it's got to be worth something. So, yeah. uh, you know, it, 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 I think it was a gold crown, as a matter of fact. Yeah. And um, um, and and uh, I, 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 but they don't give you the tooth. And and you go, I wonder what they do with the tooth. I know what they do with the tooth. They sell it's it to somebody. Yeah. yeah. Right. And do they give me a break? No. No. I, I imagine, I wonder if I asked for the tooth if they'd give it to me. I think they would. So it was actually a gold crown. It wasn't just a porcelain cap. Well, no, it was a, it was gold and co then covered with porcelain. Uh -huh. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the supposedly gold crowns are very resilient and, you know. Uh -huh. uh, mine must be pot metal. Hell, I've got a couple of crowns. One, two, one. Uh, one. Hey, you do two. sound like Lou Ferrigno. One, two. <laughs> I have two crowns that are, are uh, have been falling apart, apart over the years, but they're yeah. still fine because they're, they're back there to begin with, and they, you know, they still are tooth. You know, yeah. it's just the porcelain is kind of chipping off of it. So you know, a lot of people your your age don't have their own teeth. You know, they're uh, candidates for those pop in ones. Well, yeah. I, but I can't do use a pop in. I asked this uh, this other oh, doctor, the, whole the, thing, the people know. who pulled my tooth about the uh, about the uh, what do you call it? about the, uh, 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 the, the implant? The, they call it they call it a chipper. The now that now it's called chipper. Chipper. Everybody's got a different name for it. Oh, not clipper. Then he said, "Well, I wouldn't get it because the tooth in back it, yeah. it grabs onto both the teeth. The tooth in back is losing some has been losing some uh, uh, gum." Okay, and that, that that might exacerbate it. I said, "Am I going to lose that tooth?" He said, "No, no, the tooth's fine. It's just you've got a lot of a lot of tooth showing from because the gum is receding, and this would not help it." So everybody is convincing me that I've got to go for the uh, for the implant. I can't get a right. clipper, right? Because that's not supposedly that good, and uh, I can't get the I can't get a bridge because on one side I have a implant and the implant has its own very specialized crown that you don't want to remove and a bridge is like they if you have two good teeth on either side they grind them down if not if they both have crowns on them they pull the crowns and then a bridge has two crowns and then the fake tooth in the middle and the you know that's why it's called a bridge 
All right. So I can't. I'm not a candidate for that. The only thing I'm a candidate for is the implant. So here you we go. Feel good. Uh, you want to feel good about the implant? I have a friend that used to work for a company yeah. that made the uh, the implant uh, caps. Mm -hmm. uh, it was called uh, Ivoclar Vivident, and uh, those things are thirty five bucks a piece to the dentist. Really? Yeah, and they have to put it in a in a in an oven, and it changes the molecular structure of it. But uh, and the oven costs one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars. But the uh, the actual little cap is thirty five bucks. Thirty five bucks, and how much does he charge you? No, no, uh, thirty five dollars is for the thing. It goes to the dentist. They sell them to the dentist. Oh. Well, I well I had a girlfriend who used yeah. to her, her job during college was yeah. delivering uh, dentures and dental things and so on and crowns and so on to dentists that were made by this company that she was delivering for. Mm -hmm. And she said, do you know how much a crown costs? The yeah, dentist? Well, the one for the implant yeah, is yeah, 35 no, bucks. No, but I said the crown for the, he, she said a crown for your dentist mm -hmm. is half of what your dentist charges for it. He marks it up 100% and then sells it to you. Right, just the lab that. or... You know, if you, if you take the the what the lab has, they're they're just taking a, an in, a, an impression, and the dentist takes the impression. The lab pours some shit in it, and and gives you your crown. Well, you know what? And you then know, the dentist know, fits it back you, on. You know what we should do? I mean, we're we're always talking about you know, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, 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 health and you know medicine and, and the cost of medicine and so on and how we can make it cheaper. And the president even says he wants to do something about uh, 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 what the cost it? of medi the medi medicine. Yeah, the cost of medicine. A little out of sync. A little out of sync. Uh, it, it drives me crazy, of course. Um, <laughs> Don't look at the screen. Yeah, right. I'm going to put a big thing over it. Anyway. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, oh, oh so well, medicine. we don't make, you know, I, I don't hear anybody complaining about the cost of dentistry. You know, and well, about the fact, about and about it. the fact that your I dentist, about it all the time. yeah, but your dentist charges yeah. you double what he pays for the crown. In other words, if he, he pays if your if your crown costs you twelve hundred dollars. Mm. Let's just say but arbitrarily, the, but labor they no they. What do you mean? They just put the thing in for crying yeah, out loud. Yeah, but to do that, he's got to have an office. He's got to have billing staff. He's got to have the hygienist. He's got to have the assistant. No, he doesn't. Everything's no, got to be covered no, in plastic. No, no, he doesn't. He's got to boil his shit. I'm, you know? I'm, I'm against that. <laughs> oh, so you don't want boiled tools? Yeah, I, I'm against those doctors you used to say to me, you know the reason I charge so much? Why? Well, I have to pay for my college. I said, you're 60 fucking years old. You paid for that years ago. <laughs> but they well, always, he had yes. the Obama. Je Jeff, uh, Jeff, uh, has, Jeff has his hand up, and Jeff knows about this shit. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. If you're going to charge 50 bucks mm -hmm. to buy it from the lab, mm -hmm. and the dentist has got to sell it to you, he's got to double it up. Sorry, that's pays for him getting paid for, the secretary doing it, who's Just ever... Said. The same stuff that... All right. Else else said, I, I would say I that... I agree to agree if, with Phil. If the this. item was $10... <laughs> Don't tell anybody if else. The item, <laughs> if the item were $10 or $100 and he charged me 200 I wouldn't gripe. But when he's charging me 1500 because yeah. he's getting it for 750 I think that pays very nicely for his rent, or part of the rent. The, uh, so the amount of time protest. I'm spending with my ass in a seat where he's paying rent, you know? Yeah, but well, you should protest the lab then. So you, you're pissed at the lab for charging the dentist too much money. No. It's not the dentist. Here's what we should be able to do. I it's should, Trump's fault. No, I should be able to go to uh, a store, a place, a lab, and say, uh, I'm missing a tooth here. Make up a tooth for me. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah but I, you don't want it to be uh, fit. Wait, wait right? a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Make, just make it fit. Fit it. Make the crown. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I'll pay, buy the crown from you, and then I will take it to a dentist who will then install it. 
Yeah. And then I'll go around looking for a dentist who's the cheapest dentist for installing it because what kind of a big <laughs> whoop is that? Well, you know, that's why our med medical costs are sky high, because you there is no transparency. You know, let's say you need brain surgery. Forget All about, right? wait a minute, forget about, wait a minute. For, let's not talk now about general medical, and I'll tell you why. Because dental and medical are two entirely different animals. Okay. You, to begin with... Uh, you got a flat tire. It, it, it try and get really good dental insurance. Not possible. Doesn't exist. Well, I have fifteen, twenty five hundred dollars a year. Pretty good, okay. Not bad, all right. I mean, I'll get a uh, implant for four thousand dollars, and it'll cost me about two thousand. All right. So that, that that that's pretty good. But basically, dentists are not being hurt in and impacted. Funny term to use for her uh, dentist. Impacted in the way the doctors are. I feel sorry for doctors today. I feel sorry, you know, for the rent they have to pay and all the people they have to have working in order to, to pay to do the billing and so on and getting money out of the out of the insurance companies. But dentists do don't have Joe Paluca the, dentist. The dentists, no, dentists don't have the same problem. Sure they do. No, they don't because they're not living with. Uh, uh, whatever Medicare will pay them, whatever the insurance companies will pay them. Uh, they're living with what you'll pay them because uh, what they got to do is you walk out of there and, you, and you know, you, you're full of Novocaine. They're not grabbing your money. You got to send them a check or, or give them a credit card. Oh. Or, and then you say, hey, look, make it in five payments, you know. And, uh, so they're toting the note on top of it. Well, toting, well what, toting, toting what note? My dentist always wants all the money the minute I walk out the door. Well, How about yours? Uh, I don't know what dentist you go to. Mine never asked me for the money. Uh, oh, really? They don't? Well, they do it no, for I free? Just, I send it. They, they take pity on your teeth? No, I just send it. You know, no, they, as, they never as, asked. As we're leaving in New York City, hand yeah. us your credit card, you know pay why? for it, and we'll bill your insurance company who will then send you money for it. That's because you're 79, and they're worried you won't make it to 80. <laughs> so. I'm worried I won't make it to 80, okay? So, you know, as I said to, to, to uh, Bubs, I mean, every day I feel I'm waking up with the Grim Reaper behind me. You know? Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's, it's all about um, proximity. Uh, let's see. Today, yeah. you had a shooting in, in Charlottesville uh, at a college. Hmm. Uh, uh, what was it? Sunday, you had uh, a shooting at a um, mm -hmm. in a synagogue. But still, we shouldn't do anything about guns, huh? It's not the guns. Oh, I see. Okay. If if the it's not the guns, you know, and what they said was the guy in the synagogue. What did these people die of? Ima imaginary bullets? No, no, no. no. Yeah. But what they had was they had a gun there. Uh, at the synagogue. So what, what's happening is I think that churches, synagogues, and so forth are going to start to armor themselves so that uh, they're not soft targets. Why? Yeah. Yes. Because uh, if yeah. they don't, you're still going to have mm. these animals that, yeah. that want to uh, do I, harm I, to them. You know, I, I, don't, I, I think that we have to just change the mood of a yeah. nation. There was a guy they just arrested. I, uh, Jeff, I know you want to go. There was a guy yeah, that well, just arrested. You know Jeff, he, Jeff wants to talk, but you're not going to let him. Well, let me let me just make this one point to finish to cap off, to cap it off. Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, there was a an army guy uh, who uh, uh, was arrested because he was trying to buy uh, uh, bomb making equipment yeah. uh, to uh, to do a major thing, uh, and I think they arrested him on Sunday. Really? So instead of using a gun, he purchased th three-inch-long nails that he was going to put in these uh, pressure cooker bombs to mm -hmm. uh, uh, do maximum damage. Yeah. So it, it doesn't matter whether it's a gun or, or anything else. You just got uh, you got people out there that uh, that you know yeah. want to do we've, damage. We've been joined by Eddie Jordan. Hi, Eddie. And Jeff. Hi. Wanted to say is it uh, is it the guns or is it the people? Or is it the people's ability to get the guns? <laughs> Give you a choice of three. Oh. It's not an easy answer. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Je Jeff wants to say something. Yes, Jeff. Yeah. So my one of my experiences, mm -hmm. I 
I don't know if you guys remember, in Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina, a number of years ago, I don't know what it was, uh, five, six years ago, they had the same kind of thing happen. A bunch of Muslim people actually came in and, and killed people in the synagogue. And, and it was the oldest uh, synagogue. Along with the in, sand floor, right? Buenos Aires. So I went there. And I went there with my friend Carlos and his wife and my wife. And Carlos goes, I, I've been here many times. He says, I, I got, he says, I'm a Catholic guy, but I went to a lot of Bob Mitzvahs here. So he says, I know all about the place. And I says, well, I'd like to go see it. So I go to go there, and the door is locked. The first thing is, I knock on the door. Guy comes out with a gun. And he goes, who are you? Why do you think you want to come here? I'm Jewish. <laughs> I did. Wow. Right. I said, here I am, and I'm Jeff Stein, whatever, and my my friend speaking Spanish with me and my wife, whatever. So we told him who we are and why we come in. They said, all right, wait out here. And they didn't let me in. And they said, I want to get somebody to come out and check you out and make sure you're okay. So we wait, I don't know, 10 minutes. A rabbi walks in, <laughs> and he checks us out. Did he frisk you? <laughs> you know, I don't think he did. I don't think he did. But he had a cop with him. I mean, it was, uh, what, it was wow. a private cop or what? I don't know. But uh, it took me a while to get in there. And then once we were in, he gave us a tour and told us all about the place and very nice and very interesting, but their security was very tough to get into there. Now, this was where again? Uh, Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. Argentina. Yeah. Twice I've uh, uh, helped a friend provide security for a uh, synagogue, uh, you know, armed security. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one, they had a speaker, and uh, the other was uh, uh, the service. And uh, that, but other people do it all the time. But, uh, they needed somebody, so he asked me. Wow. Yeah. Well, 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 I've been to another synagogue right here in Connecticut, where uh, on Saturday they had a cop there. Well, you know, people people say to me, when, when, uh, "Do you do you go to uh, do you go to synagogue?" And I, uh, I I go no, and they're always going, well, "Gee, you should," you know. And uh, now I have an excuse why I don't go. It's too dangerous. It's yeah, too but, dangerous. You know, should we be frightened by these maniacs? You know, should we listen? Them... I didn't go to a synagogue before. Uh, before. I don't know why I should start now. Just to you know, <laughs> yeah. Last couple times I went, I was armed. You know, I go. I've gone. I mean, I, I, you know, I've gone. I was there for my bar mitzvah. Okay, yeah. I was there for my bar mitzvah. I was thirteen at the time, and when my. I was you know, that was I, a dying. Uh, my thing. father died that year. I went to the whole Nidra because my mother wanted me to go. So you know, I went. Uh, but I, you know, the reason I'll tell you the reason I'll give you a good reason why I I just don't go to synagogues. I used to go a lot more, but then I was in the military. Okay, and uh, I was in the navy and I was stationed in Hollywood, which, you know. Don't give me a bad time about being stationed in Hollywood because that's one of the most dangerous places in the world. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and no enemy planes got past Santa Monica Boulevard on my watch. So I did my job. But anyway, uh, I called up the, uh, I think it was the Beverly Hills Temple and because it was, it was the high holidays. And I wanted to go to like, you know, my father had died while I was in the Navy, and I wanted that year to go to the, uh, to the Yom Kippur services and for the singing of the Kol Nidra. And I called them up, and I said, uh, I, I would like to come. Uh, when, are, when are your services and stuff? When is the Kol Nidra going to be and so on? And they told me when, and they said, uh, but it cost uh, $250. And Back I went, then you were probably getting I, I said, well, look, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm in the Navy, my father died this year, and I want to go to the Kol Nidra. And they said, too bad, you ain't got the 250, you don't come in. That was the last time I ever went to a synagogue. 
you know, because somehow to say there's a price on religion, you know, if you want to say there's an honorary fee or it, what, you know, and when I said I was in the military, I thought the next thing they were going to say was, well, of course, military people are allowed in here for free, not at the Beverly Hills Synagogue. But you, you can't, you know, I'm not a religious person, but you can't uh, condemn all synagogues. Listen, that synagogue will probably one. still let Harvey Weinstein in, okay? <laughs> they can afford it. They get 250 a seat. A seat. Yeah, but I mean, I, I just, I found that, I found that wrong, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and most people would. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, most people would. I found it so. Ever since then, I I have I have I been well. I was in a synagogue one other time when I had a rabbi marry me when Ronnie and I got married. We got married at a temple, but the, you know it wasn't a service or anything. It was in his his office, you know. But uh, you know that was that. So you know. yeah, well, uh, yeah, it was a it was a tough weekend. Yeah, it was yeah. a tough weekend, um, and and it, 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 if it isn't synagogues being shot up, it's it's Islamic temples being shot up. If it isn't Islamic sure. temples, it's high schools. Sri Lanka, it's high it, it's high schools. You know, oh, forget the other countries. Let's yeah. deal with ours. <laughs> ours is a yeah. very unsafe place in which to live right now. And and I, I'm just saying, unless you do something about the guns, you know, unless we come to terms with guns. But, but you'll never say unless you do something about the mental health. That that you won't. I will say that yes. too. Well, but but unfortunately, we don't ever think about that either. Well, it's the mental health we got. All a right, all right. With. So well, a guy goes in, he shoots up, he tank. shoots up a synagogue. What should we mm -hmm. do with the guy if we catch him? Well, you know what it'll, it'll do is... No, what uh, do we do with the guy if we catch him? I'm asking you. Uh, they'll try to prosecute him. They'll probably say he's a nut uh, and that they'll put him in a mental institution. And uh, Shouldn't he be? Isn't that where he should be? Because you just said they're crazy. Yeah, it, it is where he should be. Okay, so you don't believe in executing him? Uh, it depends. I mean, uh, <laughs> if, they, if they find out that he's not nuts... <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Phil. Hate. Phil, please explain this one to me. A guy goes out, buys a bunch of guns, walks into a synagogue, kills fifty people, and then you are going to have the wait a minute, the temerity to go into a court of law and say this guy is not crazy. The uh, parents of the guy said he was off his meds. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, that he was that he. Phil, you know, Phil, anybody who kills another human being is crazy. Okay. Not necessarily. Some do it because they it's just full of hate. That's crazy. Well, don't you, you think understand? It's crazy. Apparently, apparently, you don't have an idea well, what crazy is. If they know the is. difference of right and wrong, and they chose to do it anyway. Somebody who doesn't know the difference uh, uh, for, between right and wrong, he's hearing voices, he's, he's doing all of this shit like Son of Sam, you know, David yeah, they, Berkowitz. They uh, Eddie, you know, Eddie, is, Eddie, was he crazy? Eddie, Eddie, what's crazy? <laughs> uh, well, if you're killing somebody in self-defense, is it crazy? No, no, that's not crazy. Uh, Killing, going into a synagogue or a high school, yeah, and just for whatever reason, whatever excuse you use, it's crazy. It's crazy. So I guess we have to deal with them as a person who is uh, crazy, as opposed. To, I mean, that insanity is a defense. Yeah. Yeah. Now. But you said that, uh, you know, a lot of times Look, they won't no, accept... you asked me if I believe in the death penalty. And if a guy goes into a store, yeah. holds up the store, shoots the clerk, mm -hmm. uh, should he be given the death penalty? Absolutely. Yeah, Have you gone should. through any of those checkout stands? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so so maybe he was crazy. Yeah. But uh, yeah. he had no intention of paying. He got the pack of cools, he got the, uh, the rum and coke, and then he shot the guy, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and there was nobody in front of him. So that guy isn't crazy. How does that make us any better than he is if we turn around and kill him? Uh, it's, uh, a ritualized it's, murder. Ritualized murder is, I think, just as bad as wanton 
murder. Well, if the guy went in and robbed the store, we're not going to kill him. If he went in there and shot people in cold blood, the guy needs to be taken off the face of the earth and and uh, and buried somewhere six feet under. Hmm. You know, it's 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 one thing. Uh, you know, the, the the punishment must meet the uh, must fit the crime. It's called lex talionis. But and and uh, so if somebody robs and rapes somebody, then the then lex talionis or whatever you call it would be to go out and rob and rape him. Uh, well. No, because that's a crime. But oh, oh geez. You, you, you know, you, you, you get too, too many butts. Too many butts. Look, 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 Phil, look, Phil, Phil, Phil. Is not putting somebody it says, to death. it says in the Bible. Okay, if you want to use the Bible, doesn't make the laws. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Yes, the Bible does make the laws. Most of our laws are based on the Bible. In fact, no, they're, they're based on common. They're based law. on no. They're based on the Bible. They're all very religious in nature. And then in the Bible, it says, thou shalt not kill. It doesn't say thou shalt not kill except. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Uh, yes, uh, because um, uh, Hammurabi's code uh -huh. uh, is uh, where you Hammur get. Hammura uh, it's, Hammur punishment. it's Hammurabi, by the way. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Uh, it, it's where you get the punishment must fit the crime. Raping and robbing is not killing. You know, so therefore, uh, if you incarcerate, a rapist and a, and a robber, that's one thing. But if the guy... Do you know, what you, do you know, what you, murdered, it, it, do you know in California we used to uh, execute rapists? Uh, we don't execute anybody. Well, no, but I'm saying back in the day, Carol yeah. Chessman was a perfect example of that. He never killed anybody. He was, he was charged with kidnapping and raping. And 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 what uh, what made it? Why, why do you say kidnapping? Apple, Did he, right. Because he moved the person ten feet from one place to another at gunpoint. Supposedly, he claims he didn't do it. Uh, and uh, but but in California and in the United States, rape was a punishable by death uh, crime. Do you think it should have been? Not in today's world where you can just say, uh, I, that no, guy no, no, me. Phil, I'm not asking you that. I'm asking you about your morality and whether you think uh, we no, should. No, I don't think rape should be. Okay, so like were that. we wrong in raping people? I mean, uh, 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 people, in, in killing and executing in people. people. For rape? Yes. Probably, yes. Okay. So now, how about if they kill somebody else? Are we wrong to execute them? No. So what it you're depends, doing depends depends on whether it was an accident. You know, there's different degrees to murder. Phil, you know what the difference is? People who get executed don't have good lawyers, and people who have good lawyers don't get executed. Okay, if you're in a car and you're drunk driving, and you have a head-on collision and you kill some teenage kid, uh, should you be put to death because? Uh, you weren't really in, in control of it. It wasn't you, you meant to go out and kill somebody. It, you know, it wasn't like uh, you know the guy that walks in and puts the uh, pot uh, bomb at the uh, at the um, Boston Marathon finish line and and wanted to kill people. He should be put to death. You know. Well, you know, I I am. Uh, against, I'm, against, I'm against the death penalty because uh, to, we don't really, if we knew 100% of the time, if you could assure me that 100% of the time everybody who ever got executed was guilty, then I'd say you probably had a good argument. But you can't, well, but you can't. You've got to make but, a mistake here or there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Well, that's the problem. We make mistakes, and we can't afford to make those mistakes. And those mistakes erred on the side of blacks in America, people who couldn't afford lawyers. I mean, uh, who couldn't, who didn't have the proper defense, or because of the area in which they lived, uh, they were, you know, they were executed. Um, well. We have better ways of doing things. We have DNA oh, evidence no, we do, now. We, we don't have better ways of doing things. Yes, we have DNA evidence. We have that sort of thing. But we, the, the, to, to do and that kind phones. of thing, to do that kind of thing takes good lawyering. And it takes the ability to be able to hire a good lawyer in order to make sure that the DNA is done and that it's accurately done. And you can't say that a person with, uh, who's relying 
on a uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. I've got a guy, a friend, a guy I know who's on death row yeah. in San Quentin. All right. Uh, I'm not going to say that I don't think he's guilty because I, I read what he was accused of doing. And I think, you know, when they accused him of five murders, I would say that there was a good chance that he was guilty. All right. But his his lawyer, who he, could, he could only rely on a uh, on a uh, what do you call it? A, a public a, defender. Well, no, a, a person who was doing a pro bono. Oh, OK. Uh, fell asleep during his trial. Right. You know, now he's never been executed and he probably never will be because in California, in California. Right now, if they start executing people tomorrow, uh, they'd have to put them on each other's laps in order to, <laughs> you know, get it done fast enough. Uh, I, I don't know why they even keep death row at, at San Quentin or why they keep the death penalty still open. Or have they done away they with it? They make movies there. Have they done it yet? Have they gotten rid of it yet? Uh, I think they have. They, they have? They took the uh, lethal injection chair out. It was Well, I know news. that. No, uh, they took, no, they, no, they took, was, the, they took the gas chamber chair out. Uh. And they just, it's a lethal, they, they use the chamber. This is funny. They use the gas chambers, the place where they put the gurney to, to give a lethal injection. Why mm. they did that, I have no idea. Just get the rid of the whole thing. Get, no, get rid of the tank and just, yeah. you know. They didn't do that. Well, this way the obs the people that are observing can't hear the screams. Uh, oh, is that it? Because it's a glass-in room. Oh, I see. Okay. Anyway, uh, I I just you know I'm I uh, I'm so against the death penalty. It's ridiculous because you can't you can't guarantee me that everybody who's executed was truly guilty of what they did. And we know that it's that we we know of, of any number of cases. Uh, hundreds, in fact, of people who have been proven not guilty after the fact. But the, too bad, you're dead. You know? So. Yeah, this is true. It's just that uh, sometimes when uh, the deal is, is if you're convicted mm -hmm. uh, of, to a jury of your peers, and, uh, and, you know, not everybody just wants to go home for dinner. Yeah, so how are you we going how, how to stop... Uh, how are we going to stop... Um, uh, all these people from shooting up places. Uh, what's, mean, what's, uh, what's the Phil Meyer plan? Uh, to arm everybody. Oh, hmm. my God. Yeah, you see, uh, if Welcome if to not a soft they, they used to arm everybody. It was called Dodge City, and they used to shoot each other in the streets. Works. But you know what? What do you mean I it find, works? Uh, you know, the, the states <sighs> that have... Uh, uh, concealed carry seem to have the politest people, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> in Texas. Uh, and Charlie will probably realize this. In Texas, before they allowed concealed carry, when uh, that woman with Richards was the uh, governor, uh, I was there. I was in a taxi cab and I was watching the road rage going on. Uh, another time Phil, I was Phil, there, Phil, I, in a taxi, I, I worked, they had concealed I, carry. I worked, and everybody was I, polite. I worked in Houston, Texas. And yeah, at that, that time in Houston, Texas, you were allowed to carry a gun. Okay, you had to carry it as a sidearm. You couldn't do it concealed. Yeah. You had to wear it on a holster, in a holster, on your on your belt. Okay, uh, and so then we would come in on Monday, and I'd say, "Well, what news do we have today?" And Richard Dobbin, who was my newsman, said, "Well, let's see. There were." Um, there were about 10 murders this weekend, but that's an average weekend, and we don't consider that news. So How there's your carrying Chicago? gun state. Where, where they don't allow guns they, in Chicago, they, they, How many do they have there on a weekend? 70? We, you we, can get guns right across the line in Indiana. They don't. Yeah. Al they don't yeah. allow. It's against the law. It's against the law. If you made very, not, if you made very tough law, law. what? It's not a federal law. You're absolutely right. There is no right. federal law that says you can't own a gun. There's a federal law that says yes. you can. It's called the Second Amendment. No, but the Second <laughs> Amendment doesn't say that, Phil. And I'm not going to go through this with you again. But there, yeah. I don't know what, uh, what, what, how you interpret it, but it says in order to maintain a well-ordered militia... The right of the people to right, to uh, bear arms shall not be infringed. It wait a minute. 
it specifically states in order to it, you have to be part of a militia. No, oh, it, it, well, well regulated. A well regulated, a well regulated militia, and it's to make sure that you don't have a tyrannical government that wants to uh, create all sorts of regulations so they can tax you five trillion dollars uh, because the end of the world is coming in ten years. You know. Uh, Mr. Beto, what, what are you saying? You're, 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 Be Beto today said, or yesterday said, that the end of the world is coming in ten years. You see, he, he's he's doing one up on uh, on AOC. She says the end of the world's coming in twelve years. He says I can do it in ten. You know, <laughs> and Trump, he's only trying to do it in six more. But the the uh, so, but then he says he needs five trillion dollars to do that. And then the guy I like, uh, Yang, he says he wants to give everybody $12,000 a year guaranteed income. And they asked him how he was going to do it. And he said with a 20% VAT tax. <laughs> so, you know, uh, all, all of these guys are nuts. But as far so as... So's uh, the guy you're voting for, Donald Trump. I, I didn't say I was voting for him. I, I liked he, him on the he, Democratic he, side. No, I, no I, I said that the, your yeah, guy's uh, a nutcase. Uh, uh, my guy is doing to uh, uh, Pelosi and Schumer. Uh, you remember the old joke? Uh, you know, would you would you sleep with me for uh, a dollar? No, oh, I wouldn't boy. do that. No, no, would no, you no, sleep no. with me for a million dollars? Yeah, yes. No. And then they said, well, now that we know that you're yeah, a, yeah, a hooker, yeah, we're bickering over the price. It's just a matter of uh, bickering over the price. Yes. The, so the first conversation with who, uh, who, who is who is credited with having said that? you but uh, no but who was credited with having said that <laughs> i don't know george burns no I, no I know who winston churchill oh okay so anyway i didn't know he went with hookers you know, no he, he this happened to be a very well turned out woman that he was arguing this with and he said to her would you go to bed with me for uh for for uh, uh, a hundred a uh, hundred dollars oh boy it was i think he started with a million dollars and yeah. she said, well, maybe. Yeah. And then he said, how about, you know, 25 cents or something like that? She said, what kind of woman do you think I am? And he said, well, we've already established that. We're just bickering about the price. Right. So See? Schumer So if you're going to tell the story, tell it okay. so it's well, funny. You're the, you're the comedian here. Uh, I'm not and, a comedian. Uh, well, do I look like a comedian to you? You do now. <laughs> so, and, and you tell the jokes better. Well, anyway, Plumer, uh, uh, Schumer and Pelosi meet with Trump in the White House. And they come up with a number. Sounds like the of beginning two, of a joke. Pelosi right. and Schumer meet in the White House. The bar. <laughs> <laughs> two trillion dollars for infrastructure. And they, they come out of the White House and they said, yeah, Trump didn't ask us to do this or that or the other thing. He just said, yeah, OK, you want two trillion? Yeah, well, well two, two trillion. And so, uh, and he didn't ask for anything. Well, this is just just like that joke. What's going to happen is he's going to say, "Well, I also want the wall. I also want, uh, you know, the uh, the DACA thing taken care of. I also want immigration to be uh, taken care of. And I want this and this and this and this and this." And then, you Phil, know, we'll Phil, fix the I roads. want you to answer me a little question here because it, it all comes down to the wall. That seems to be Trump's. Big deal is the wall. Um, it turns out that the wall hasn't been built, even though he says they're building it right now, and yet everybody goes, where? Uh, I, I was... No, I, here's I, what happened. I, I was told Co 400 miles no, of wall was uh, built. Uh, no, 400 miles was there already. Okay, well, what they're doing, what, 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 what the Congress appropriated money to do was to reinforce it because it was falling apart. But mm -hmm. there hasn't been an inch built to that wall, and he says it's being built right now, and people That's like you and his minions go, oh, see, we're building the wall. Well, hey, and, and now he's going to charge, uh, if you want amnesty, you know, when you go to rent an apartment, sometimes they want you to pay for the application. Well, he just took that and he said, if you want amnesty, you got to pay for the application. And uh, that means... What does that have to do? I just asked you about the... The Mexicans will build the wall. No, 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 the, no, 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 Phil, Phil, all I'm saying is the guy lies through his fucking teeth. He hasn't built an inch. 
Well, he says he has. But he has. But I, I don't care if he says he has. He's a lying piece of sack of shit. Fuck. Yeah. Well, you know, he, he said his lying. dad was born in Germany, too. So? Maybe he was. Another... No, his dad wasn't born in Germany. His grandfather was born in Germany. And their name isn't Trump. It's Drumpf. So he could have said my granddad. You know? I mean, uh, you, you you're slicing bread In fact, uh, uh, John Oliver had a thing on his show a couple of years ago where you could go online and get this program they had made up. And Marjorie okay. has it actually installed in her computer. And to this day, every time the name Trump comes up, whether it's in the New York Times or wherever, it comes up drumpf. How does the spell check deal with that? It has nothing to do with spell check. It has yeah. to do with the fact that it, it, everything that says Trump on her computer says drumpf. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That and 15 cents won't get you a token on, a, on the subway anymore. Yeah. But anyway, uh, you know, I, I just I just thought that... It, by the way, is anybody else going to call? I still have two more spaces at least on this part to fill up, and, I, and I'm still in sync, and I'd like to see if some people can put me out of sync. <laughs> Charlie, what do you think of what we're saying? Wasn't I right about Texas, that uh, in Houston, Texas, on a Saturday yeah. night, uh, you know, people go around shooting each other? You had a lot of a uh, road rage with the guns where people would get out and shoot at each other. Yeah, yeah. Did you see the movie L.A. Story? Did you see the movie L.A. Story? Uh, uh, they said it was a rite of passage. You know, it was springtime, and uh, Chevy Chase is going down the 405 shooting at people with a 357. And they said, well, you know, it's, it's springtime. It's a rite of passage in L.A. <laughs> yeah, very funny. Uh, as what? you were saying, I was talking to Charlie. Uh, Charlie, I mean, you, you, you know, you lived where when you were in Texas? I lived in Austin. You lived in Austin. I did live in Houston for a year. Yeah, Austin's a little bit less crazy than Houston. Dallas is batshit nuts. Mm -hmm. uh, and San Antonio is nice. <laughs> you know. But Austin, uh, uh, so Austin, you probably had the gun problem there. I, you certainly had it with what? What's his name? Whitman, the guy that went up to the Texas Tower. Charles and started, Whitman started mm -hmm. uh, yep. started shooting. I was there at the time, not in Austin, but in Houston. And mm -hmm. I think that was the first event of that sort that we can remember. I think that yeah. kicked it all off. You know. Yeah. yeah. He started it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good old oh. Charles Whitman. Well, you know, I mean... I don't know. They used to rob banks and stuff like that and shoot up the places, you know, the Bonnie and Clyde stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so, you know, it's just that he went up in a tower and, and, and got the advantage. Yeah, but most of those people that robbed banks with guns didn't kill anybody doing it. If it happened, it happened by accident. They just used oh. the guns as a threatening device. So they weren't crazy. No, uh, uh, were they crazy or weren't they crazy? Uh, they were a product of the Depression. The guy who used to rob the trains, didn't he say he robbed trains because that's where the money was? That was uh, what's his name down in L.A. And, and the, it wasn't trains, it was banks. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was what's, what's his name? It was... Um, Dillinger? No, it wasn't Dillinger. It was the guy in L.A., the L.A. gangster, uh, uh, Mickey Cohn. Oh. And he said, why do you rob oh. banks? And he said, because that's where the money is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, um, uh, I just, uh, I, I, I did. Willie Sutton. Willie, Willie Sutton, Sutton, that's who it was. I had to look it up. Yeah, it was Willie Sutton. You're absolutely right. Um, Google is. Yeah, and I was right Good about job. the quote, though. It was about <laughs> banks. That's where the money is. Yeah. yeah. Well, who, who was the guy that robbed the trains? I don't was know. One, it was before those guys. It, it, by, by the time of Willie Sutton, there were no bank, uh, no uh, trains. Jesse uh, James? Maybe yeah. it was Jesse James. Yeah. Well, yeah, but he didn't say that. It was Willie Sutton who said it. All right. When you looked up Willie Sutton, uh, Eddie, did it say that? Did it attribute that quote to him? Yeah, I yeah. just... Well, I, I put in the quote, and it came up Willie Sutton. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So Phil's wrong again. Everybody up. have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. Well, well, that's all I got to talk about tonight. Well, I found the most delicious water 
uh, uh, which uh, you could go in the Gabnet store. It's called Flow. It's an alkaline spring water. And this one's organic strawberry mm -hmm. and rose uh, infused. Yeah. Pretty good stuff. So did anybody watch Game of Thrones this weekend? No. You missed one fucking great piece of television. Uh, well, don't uh, tell me about it. I but... missed the whole series. Uh, well, uh, I've never seen it. <laughs> I've never seen it. If you never, Netflix. I got to tell you, if you never saw that show and you watched only that episode, you'd be very satisfied by it. Believe me. You don't have to know who's doing what to who. All you have to know is on one side you got the human beings, and on the other side you've got uh, uh, a uh, the, the, the no the uh, the army of the dead the army of the dead, okay? And that's all you need to know. And it is an hour and what twenty minute battle, uh, and it's perfectly staged and perfectly parceled out, and. I, I, they, I, you know, it, it, it's as good as any movie I've seen. It was just that good. Well, if you didn't see it, um, more people saw that than saw anything else on television last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks as though it had a total audience of uh, 17.8 million viewers for the first watchings, both <laughs> streaming, on demand, uh, and a rerun that ran later Sunday night. Um, it, it says 12 million people watch the episode live. So that would put it as the top show of the week for that sort of thing. How, how many people saw J.R. get shot? I have no uh, idea. Well, I'm just because I thought that was the top. Well, uh, it, well, in those days, you only had three fucking networks. Yeah. You know, you didn't have much to choose from, so you either had to watch Jr. get shot or, you know, some game show or, you know, whatever. You know, yeah. Jack Tarr. But uh, that's quite an audience. It was the biggest audience HBO has ever had for anything. Wow. And it was and, just that. Uh, HBO was just bought by who? Uh, HBO was just bought by at and T. Yeah. yeah. They were happy about that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and... Uh, well, they're not happy about it because they never saw the profits off of uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, what they have gotten, I would imagine, the idea, you know, the idea in doing great shows like that on HBO isn't in order to uh, make money from commercials or anything like that because it's non-commercial, but it's to get more subscribers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they have a lot of subscribers. They don't have as many subscribers as uh, Netflix. But um, soon all that's going to become a big, it's going to become this big uh, hodgepodge of, of, of who's got what when. And uh, Netflix may have some problems coming up. What with the emergence of the Disney uh, app. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Bless you. <laughs> Will this new landscape... Uh, the Netflix, Disney, HB, or uh, AT and T, just be the new uh, NBC, CBS, ABC. No, you know, it, no, no, no. T totally different model. Those were networks. They yeah, they ran these... shows. They ran shows day and date. Right. They ran shows day and date, and uh, they uh, uh, ran commercials in them. And that's how they existed for the longest time. Uh, Several H of the other ones run commercials, unless you pay extra. Uh, which ones run, pay extra? Uh, doesn't H uh, doesn't uh, Hulu have commercials? Yes. Except if you pay extra? Except if you uh, pay $4 more extra, which I do, and then you don't get commercials. But there are no commercials on Netflix. There are no commercials on Amazon Prime. Because it's subscriber-based. Are there going to be no... It, well, but, but I'm, you're, you're saying, aren't these the new networks? No, they're not, because the networks weren't, weren't Yeah, but they, uh, they rely on based. advertising, whereas these other ones rely on subscriber and streaming. So uh, it just means that this is the new paradigm for the way to, to, to watch, but it's really uh, boiling down to three or four players, just like there were three or four networks, except 
maybe the model is the paradigm has changed a bit. It's paradigm. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll give you a quarter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, it, 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 the fact is that it, it's a whole different way of, of presenting programming uh, in which it's, it's pay TV. That's it, plain and simple. We always talked about pay TV. Remember years ago at the movie theaters, they used to stop pay TV. Remember that? Those no. all, uh, all the, they, had, they used to have uh, things saying stop pay TV. And yet yeah, here we are, and movies, people would go, an and, and, we, and pe people would go, oh, well, I never pay for TV. Or what? Yeah. You get it for free. Got an antenna. Yeah. Then HBO uh, came along. Well, yeah. that, that ended that one, yeah. you know. And everybody, well, when they first started... more than HBO, it was just cable. No, you know, no, 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 picture. no, no, it, it, Let me explain cable to you, Phil, so you know how it came, what cable was back in those days. Cable existed, be, it was called community antenna television is what it was called. And what it was is you'd have a town like, say, Klamath Falls, Oregon, where no TV signals got into Klamath Falls, Oregon. So the guy who owned the big TV store, the store that was trying to sell TVs but couldn't because there were no TV signals in, in Klamath Falls, Oregon, created uh, a, um, uh, uh, put up a g giant antenna up on a hill and then ran a cable down into town and then started spreading the cable all over town. And if you bought a TV set from the guy, he'd let you latch onto the cable. And that was the beginning of cable TV. That's essentially what cable TV was. It was community antenna. So now the antenna then became a satellite dish? No. Is that? No. No, 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 no. no. The, the, the basics of cable were then born. I mean, you had a cable, and it delivered programming to the homes. Mm -hmm. uh, it was then a HBO that came along and said, well, we're going to start running. They were going to run movies. That's why it was home box office, okay? Mm -hmm. They were going to run movies, and uh, they ran. They started running a, a service with movies, and you had to pay. I think I think at that time six ninety five a month, okay. And I bought it, you know, so I could watch uh, movies. But it was all day and date. I mean, it wasn't like you didn't have HBO Go where you could do it delayed yeah. and whatever. And so. Uh, HBO grew, and that was the first of the pay TV outfits. Then you had uh, CBS came up with Showtime, and there were a few others, and they were around for a while. And then uh, all of a sudden, did you do the Netflix where you send away for the three? No, movies never, and, no. never. I thought that was the stupidest idea I ever heard of, because I in those days was buying laser discs anyway. So you know, I I didn't care about you know sending away for a movie. Yeah. yeah, I know a few people that did that. Well, I think what Netflix did, and what they eventually became, oh, look at that! It was hey, very Charlie, smart. Charlie sent away. <laughs> they, st they, you know, they were going to withdraw that service, Charlie. They yep. were going to do away with it, and too many people complained. There are a lot of people yep. still renting. I mean, I'm sure that if you go to the Netflix offices and you try and find the place where they send these things out, it's like in the basement somewhere. You know. But you can get movies on the DVD that you can't find on the broadcast. Right. Uh, now, I've never done the rental thing, but I've looked for movies. For instance, uh, 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 your friend uh, Bob Rubin was in a movie, uh, uh, Something 2. Right? But Boondocks, yeah. Boondocks. Yeah. You can't find that on Netflix. Well, come to my house. I've got it. <laughs> okay. In September, I'm thinking about running a marathon. Mm-hmm. You're thinking about um, running a marathon? Yeah, uh, the uh, Tunnel to Towers. Uh, uh, we're one of the sponsors, and uh, it, it goes from, uh, uh, it's 5.3 miles, but um, uh, it's through, uh, you, you go from Brooklyn to... I bet you uh, don't make it more than a mile and a half. <laughs> I could walk. How, how many here are putting money on him not making a mile and a half? Will you hey, raise you know, your I'm hands, please? I'm supposed to raise money to donate to the uh, Stephen Stiller Tunnel of Towers thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, come on, put some money on it. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll crawl across the finish line. <laughs> You'll crawl across the finish line? Okay. I'll probably have to. <laughs> um, yeah. Or they'll push the gurney well, what, across. When, when is that? Uh, it's in September. Oh, I well, I'll probably be dead of my cancer by then. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, let me see. I think I put it down. May, September. Uh, 
September 29th. By the way, I'm not going to be doing a show on the 21st of May. Yeah. Because I am... The, uh, um, uh, first of all, Albert's coming up. And he's coming up because I, I wasn't going to go to something. And he said, I, I'll, if I come up, will you go? And I said, yes. So he's coming up. And on the 21st, they're holding a, uh, a celebration, a, a three-hour party, uh, celebrating the long history of WPLJ here in New York, which is now about to end its life because it was sold to somebody else and they're turning it into a religious music station. Oh, God. Uh, and, oh, uh, it was. So it's the end of <laughs> WPLJ after, I think, 35 years. And so, so, they, so they said anybody who wants to attend who is a member of WPLJ's... Uh, alumni. Alumni... Uh, just write us and tell us you're coming to the party. And so far, 300 people have replied. The thing that makes me significant among those people is that I'm among the first group that were the staff, live air staff, uh, at WPLJ. So I go back further than just about anybody who'll be in that room. So I feel like they probably won't even know who the fuck I am. <laughs> you know, because they'll all go, well, I remember when Scott Shannon started this and we were over there in, uh, you know, in the 1980s and blah, 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 in the 1990s. Oh, when did you start? Uh, 1972? <laughs> you know? Oh, hmm, 1972, huh? Uh, and your name is? You know. <laughs> But I, I remember it. I mean, uh, it was uh, I, I, that was quite a station, quite a station when it started. It then just became another piece of shit. But you know, it's my opinion. <coughs> so. so I'm going to go to a party uh, that night, and uh, it goes from six to nine. But I don't think I'm going to get back in time to suddenly get this thing up and running. So, you know. Also, later this week, I don't know. I might be off one day just to try and reinstall the old machine. Either that or I'll just wait till the weekend and do it then. Oh, uh, and tomorrow? Yeah. It's Phil Free, so tell your friends. I wish it were Phil Free tonight. Jeez. Oh, I, I can arrange that. It's, I mean, it's you know. Um, I, I got more stuff. You got more stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we got the uh, Mueller Challenges Bar spin on uh, media coverage frustration. Well, Mueller uh, said that he felt that Barr's uh, distillation, his four-page distillation of his 446-page report, was uh, not sufficient. Uh, no, put. what he said was, uh, uh, let me see if I can find the, the sentence, but uh, what he said was is that he felt that the way he explained it, that uh, he was correct in his explanation, but that it may have misled or the media didn't get the right message from uh, what he said. Uh, but he didn't have a problem with, uh, with Barr's, uh, you know, Barr's uh, interpretation of the report. He said, he, from what I read, he wasn't satisfied with it. No, it was only because he felt that the media Where are you could, reading uh, this question. from? Where are you reading this from? Uh, Breitbart. Mueller, Barr. Well, wait a minute. Let me let me find it there. Oh, Washington Post. And and, oh, yeah. and, and because what I read was that uh, that uh, Mueller had said that he was not happy with the distillation, that he felt it simplified it too much and glossed over it. Uh, well, he um, uh, 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 talk for a minute. Let me find the exact sentence that he. Uh, yeah, I'm he sure said. you'll find it somewhere, Phil. No, oh, it's in the Washington Post, then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, he, uh, Mueller wrote... Oh, shit, I just touched something, and it went... He said something about... Uh, he says there's public confusion, or there, there could have been public confusion about uh, what he wrote based on the, uh, the synopsis. He, yes, that he was Barr, unhappy with the synopsis because it did not accurately... Syn uh, uh, Distill no, he, he felt the it information. public confusion. He didn't feel that it wasn't accurate. 
No, he, he didn't say it was accurate. <laughs> yeah, he did, actually. No, he did, did he say it was accurate? Yes. Where, uh, where did... I'll, I'll find it. In you, the same you, article. You'll, you'll find it. Okay. Here's a Washington Post. It says... Yes, it, Eddie. It's, it says, did not fully capture the context, nature, and substance of Mueller's work. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Phil, did you hear that? Yes, but uh, he also said that it uh, was correct in its conclusions, although it um, uh, it, it may have uh, uh, because it didn't capture the uh, all the work that he put into the 448 pages. He felt that it might have uh, been confusing for not only the media but the public. And. You know the other thing. Well, wait a minute! I'm getting more... two. I'm getting two different versions of this. I'm getting your interpretation, and I'm getting Eddie's interpretation. Well, I, I'm I'm looking for the exact sentence that I uh, read that gives the accurate uh, mm -hmm. description. Sure. Yeah. Uh, let me uh, see here. I, at I, least some of the major concerns with Mueller's letter makes clear that uh, that he doesn't believe Barr handled the context of the report accurately which lends credence to the analysis that Barr skipped over Mueller's actual justification for concluding that Trump had obstructed justice. In fact, if you look at Mueller's report closely, you'll see that there was multiple instances in which he indicated there was evidence that mm -hmm. President Trump's conduct satisfied three key criteria for obstruction. Barr has uh, apparently been under fire. Uh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, we're being joined by uh, who, who are we being joined by? Uh, oh, this is Tim. Hi, right. Tim. Hi, Tim. Uh, it's a conspiracy. Tim, what did he say? Well, it's my understanding the important part was the attachments that, that, that Mueller had attached. Redacted summaries of each of the sections and was very upset that Barr did not submit those to Congress. And he did. He was upset. There was also a phone call, Phil. And yeah, a 15-minute phone call. Yeah, and the, the, the basic gist of it is, Barr had no business making con drawing his own conclusions. Of course he, he did. He's his report. boss. Hey, Phil, don't talk over me, please. When we finish, then you can talk. Uh, the the fact that uh, Barr has was in no position to make conclusions himself that this stuff should have been given to Congress because only Congress can take action against the sitting president. The Department of Justice can't. And uh, and also the letter was marked was March 27th from Mueller to Barr, and in the hearings Barr on April 10th told Congress when they asked him what how did Mueller feel about your report and he said I don't know, so now it's possible perjury on Barr's part because he said he didn't know what Barr's response to the four-page report was. Was Barr's so, testimony, was, was Barr's reading of the letter uh, a press conference, or was it sworn testimony? No, it's sworn, it's sworn testimony in front of the committee. No, it was. That's why, and, and read the, watch the news tomorrow. They're going to ask Barr back, but we really don't need to hear from Barr. We need to get Mueller in there, and the DOJ is uh, stonewalling that. So uh, my understanding, the guy that wrote the regs, the, Richard Payal, if Miller just needs to resign, and then they can't prevent him from testifying. Okay. It the, says the whole here, bottom thing is, William Seifire had a, an op-ed years ago when Barr was there before that he's a cover-up general. They called him the cover-up general. All right, yeah, exactly it's another conspiracy. Uh, it, no, it's not it a says conspiracy. Even, it's a known fact what he did to, uh, with the pardons. Yeah, even admit, uh, admit the blowback against Barr's initial summary though it was clear that Mueller himself personally uh, disputed it. There, uh, there. Okay, there. No, we get. Anyway, it's got to come out in the, the rest of the congressional testimony. Uh, so uh, I think the, the beginning of the end is coming, probably because the White House can't stonewall everything because then they don't have a leg to stand on in court. You can't use specific arguments in court when you're using a general argument to withhold uh, evidence. So it's, it's going to take a while, but uh, the, the end is coming. Well, I think the big question here is if there is no uh, 
if there's no reason to, why are they stonewalling? What do they need to stonewall for if they're all in the, you know, the Be, right? Because you, you know what the uh, Congress is going to do. The Democratic Congress is going to look to any point they can do to obstruct Trump and his agenda. No, no, we're just asking to see if the law is followed. The, Trump's major problem was he never divested. You know, uh, and the and fact that he did not divest means he's uh, and we and, and and you know Adam Schiff said they have not received any counterintelligence information that they were supposed to, and they've been stonewalling on that for months upon months. Yeah, the but the key I, thing is, was the president compromised because of his business dealings with Russia? He wasn't. They, uh, uh, Mueller's report said lie, there was no collusion. Not, why did he lie? He worked <laughs> on that Trump Tower in Moscow for years. Why did he, he lie didn't about lie? It? He told he the truth. Did. It he was it no was his business. attorney that lied. No, Trump said several times, "I have no business with Russia." Period. Well, he didn't. No business with. He did. He had a Trump. To, they have a signed contract, Phil. He uh, that uh, they did not go through with that deal. But, uh, no, 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 no. You don't have to finish something to have business with somebody for years. He's been trying for years to get the Trump Tower in Moscow. Only Putin can give him that. Putin's the only person in the entire world. That he hasn't said something bad about. It's obvious that he's that Putin has holds, is holding something over Trump's head. Well, maybe he it's obvious that he's him. he's not going to be able to negotiate the things he needs to with Putin if he says bad things about the guy. No, 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 no. You don't count out everybody. Is he count out to Maduro? No. Down in Venezuela? No, he's not. No, because story. Maduro is starving his people. Did you see them run over somebody with an armored vehicle today? Right, uh, they, right. Yeah, well, Phil, we yeah. understand that. We feel for the Venezuelan people, and we have for the longest time. But, but you know, the blockade is helping Russia because it's raised the price of oil. The blockade, the blockade on oil with the the oil uh, sanctions against Iran. Okay. The whole, the whole idea for that was to raise prices for oil to help Russia out because they're dying. Uh, I, found, I, I found the uh, I found the uh, even admit the <clears throat> blowback against Barr's initial summary, though it wasn't clear that Mueller himself personally disputed it. So uh, you know Mueller didn't dispute it. This is this is uh, hyperbole no, it doesn't on the say part that. of. Wait a minute, hold on a second, Eddie. What were you going to say? It says it wasn't clear that it, that he disputed it or didn't it dispute it. Even it, it wasn't clear that Mueller himself personally disputed it. That doesn't mean he. He did or didn't. It means it's not clear. Well, either he did. He he, he didn't. If he if he didn't, he didn't. You well, know. Now, yeah. it, it, it's, now it's, it, it's still he, we don't know. That's why we need to have Mueller testify. We don't know. That's well, let him testify. I don't know that they're 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 blocking that stuff. They just didn't want McCabe uh, oh, to well, testify. Why didn't they want have, McCabe to testify? Because so. he was the attorney, uh, and uh, he he and there should be some attorney client privilege. You know, you know I, I, I've told you the theory on Jack's show. It's my, I'm, I'm convinced that Barr wants to be vice president. They're, nah. they're, they're pushing. Pence does not meet with. There are already rumblings on CNN. has had a couple of reports CNN. that the party wants Pence off the ticket. Pence and Trump do not have, do not have lunch together anymore. Uh, and Barr would, uh, Trump would owe the vice presidential slot to Barr for saving him from this mess. Just wait and see. Wait and see. I doubt it. Well, I, I don't know if that's true or not true. And, and, uh, but I'm he, just throwing that out there. We'll see what happens. Here, here, yeah. come, here, come, here, here comes the big 60, <laughs> here comes the big $64 question, uh, as they used to say in the old days when I was a young kid. Uh, <laughs> and, and that is, um, do you feel that, and I don't, I'm, not, I'm not asking you, Phil. I'm asking the rest of the people here. Okay. Uh, do you feel that uh, that that uh, and it looks like uh, Biden is really very much in the lead among the Democrats? Do you think that's the Democrats' best shot? I'll I'll start with Charlie because Charlie always has an opinion on these sort of things. Well, it, we, we can't hear you, Charlie. Charlie. Turn on your microphone. Okay. No, I don't think Biden is the best shot. You don't think he has the best shot? No. What, what, why don't you think he has the best shot? Well, because he's 
made a lot of gaps in the past, and I think he'll make a bunch of gaps over the next, uh, you know, campaign. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So you think he's vulnerable? You think he's vulnerable? Is what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How about how about you, Eddie? How do you feel about it? <clears throat> yeah, I I think he's got. Plus the whole, there's a whole group of of people that attack him for this creepiness, supposed creepiness. The the uncle creepiness. Um, uncle creepy, yeah. 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 Which yeah. Is, which I think is BS, <clears throat> but I think that they'll just harp on it and keep harping and drive it into the ground. How about That's, you? I'm sure to affect yeah. him. How about you, Jeff? I'm a little uh, concerned about anybody who's on the list. Of, of the 22 people that are on the list or whatever it is that mm -hmm. I did, there's just a tremendous number of people. And I, I really don't have any clear direction from anybody there. And so I'm kind of like I'm waiting to hear mm -hmm. better better descriptions about yeah. what they really want to accomplish. Tim, how about you? <laughs> well, uh, a couple things. What, what Biden's gaffes? Mm -hmm. You know, a dozen gaps against 10,000 lies. From Trump. Exactly. And, and the other thing is, I'll throw this out there, and I'm just this crazy world, too, but mm -hmm. if Biden stays that high in the polls, I think he should pick Clinton as a running mate. Because uh, we owe it to her, but that's that's just that's just. Well, I, I don't think we, I, I disagree with you, Tim. I don't think we owe Hillary Clinton anything. I think she lost a one race. Okay. Right. She that's she true. blew it. Well, she blew it. Yeah. Now that that's my crazy idea, but I think I would like to see Elizabeth Warren because she is can get stuff done. She's smart, and she had the rally going down in Texas. Okay. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Not yet, Phil. I know it's, I know you're dying to say something. Uh, I was doing but, the tomahawk chop. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 but my question to you, Tim, is uh, do you really think that's a winning ticket? Well, I, I mean, that, maybe, that, maybe, that's I, your, maybe that's your dream ticket, but is that a winning ticket? Well, a lot of people are a person, uh, Biden and then Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Uh, and she's good, too. Well, between Biden and Clinton, they've lost, I think, five presidential campaigns. Yeah, yeah. Look at Phil. Mm -hmm. He's just, he's, he's, he's going crazy, folks. Yes, Phil. All right. Uh, I think what we have with Biden was what we had with Hillary, that the polls are propelling him and saying he's the absolute front runner, he's the best thing since sliced bread, he's 26 points ahead, uh, there's no way he could lose, he could beat Trump right now, he could beat Trump in six months. They said the same thing about Hillary, but, and, and when uh, against, um, against uh, not only against Trump, but against uh, Bernie they, Sanders. They, they, fell. they fell, they were right, she won by three million votes. Uh, yeah, let me finish. They were right. It, 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 no, they were talking about electoral college votes. Oh, no, but, we're talking about popular, but go ahead. All right, whatever you want to believe, dream on. But, you know, the, so what I'm, what I'm saying about uh, Biden is that he's the sweetheart of the media, he's the sweetheart of the DNC, and if they could get away with superdelegates again, they'd give them the superdelegates. And I think that what we've got here <clears throat> is uh, they know that these other people don't have a chance in, in, in hell of, uh, of uh, it, it's like an ice cube in hell. They don't have any chance of, uh, of winning. Maybe Biden, maybe, he's the only one that might be sane enough uh, to, to run. And so they're they're rigging the they're rigging the system again, uh, just like they did with Hillary. I'm still going door, door to door for Avenatti, so I bet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're going door to door for Art Bell. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I uh, well, I, well, Oprah, I think you know, I think Oprah's, I, Oprah's quitting. Oprah's quitting her uh, uh, 60 Minutes. Maybe she's going to run. No, no she's, you know why she's quitting 60 Minutes. Alex has well, given her a slot on Gab. Hey, wait a minute. Alex has given her a slot on GabNet. Uh, actually, the reason she left 60 Minutes a long time ago, and her whole deal now is with Apple, okay, for their oh, okay. their their little channel, which I, quite frankly, uh, I don't see it's gonna 
be a big deal. He's going to be the anchor store. Yeah, something like that. Mm. Uh, but uh, 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 here, here's the point. Here's the point. We're a year and a half away from the election. I mean, it, it, to say that anybody is ahead now is ridiculous because, you know, uh, it, it, if, if this were many, many years ago, Obama wouldn't even be in the top five. You know, it, it's a matter of time. And I, I just think I, I think we're doing this too early. I really do. Yeah. I, 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 I think that none of these candidates should have come forward until, uh, oh, maybe at least October, November to give them a little run ahead of the uh, of the Iowa caucus and the, you know, the Vermont uh, uh, primary is the Vermont primaries. Uh, well, you have to go to public-funded primaries, Alex, to get rid of that because they got to raise a lot of money now. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that those primaries are still a long stretch away. I don't think anybody should be running for president right now. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. No, no, I, think, I agree with you, but they have to because they need the money. Because think of all the That's money. Right. Think of all the money that it costs us. Think of what it costs the states just to run primaries. That's why I'm. I honestly believe we should do away with primaries. Yeah. You know that Trump is. Uh, be, he declared early, uh, yeah. in his first in his first thing because he's been raising money, yeah. uh, ever ever since. I don't know how many text messages I get a day from Trump. Things. He declared the day after the inauguration. Yeah, he yeah. Mm -hmm. started his re-election campaign. Well, mm -hmm. the other thing, the reason they raise money early is, I'd like to get paid to take a free vacation around the United States. I, I might run a campaign just so I can go from state to state and see the all 50 of them. Sounds like a good deal to me. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. No, well, there's too much... There's too many things they're allowed to who, spend. Who, have we, who have we? Who have we? We've got another person on the phone. Who? Who have Thanks, we got? Jack. Jack, is it you? It, Jack? You know, it, Jack. It, I you wish. Know. I wish. You, I wish you would use your video because, quite frankly, uh, it uh, screws up our whole. You know. You're going to need him how to, to show him how to get a, a personal Skype account. Hey, I'll, I'll take care of that. You know, sometimes I think it's a good idea to ask your opponent, "Who would you hate?" to face. So, Bill, who would Trump hate to face? Jack Bishop. Getting serious. Go as far and as deep into the Democratic Party as you want. Who would Trump hate to face? Uh, well, the current field, I don't think, uh, shows uh, any anyone that uh, would be any good. Hey, to begin with, to begin with, Jack, Jack, don't ask Phil. He's not going to well, give no, you. Think, you know, I, I ask, ask, uh, ask, you know, Jack, ask, ask Charlie, know. ask Jeff, ask uh, Eddie. You know, ask ask Alex because I don't I don't know that I, many ask him. Uh, Democrats that aren't in jail. Ask you know. Tim. So you know, you oh. but you see, those you are the those are, those are, Jack. Those are the kind of answers you're going to get out of Phil, and they're not worth taking your time asking. Had to do it. Catch you on the other other side of the top of the hour. Uh, okay. Hey, hey, Jack, let me rephrase oh, your, your question. Yeah. Yeah. All I'm saying to you, Jack, is that he's not going to give you any other meaningful. I, I don't know. I don't know who he wouldn't want to face because yeah. I don't think there's anyone out there that he would back away from. Yeah. Yeah. Let's change the question. Who would Fox News hate to go up against? Um, Good question. I don't. I don't know. Uh, you know. I, uh, I. I would say AOC if she was old enough. Nah. Because they go out and bash her quite a bit. Nah. You know she, she, she's she's a, she's a flash in the pan. She won't be around for the next election. Uh, and the Democrats yeah, will know. make sure that she's doesn't happen. Of, They're estimating her at the Herald. She'll be around. Yeah, she'll be tending bar. They said that and about Jennifer that, Lopez. And Phil, you, and Phil, you base that on what? Uh, she's doing nothing for her constituents. She's lost uh, twenty five thousand dollars. I'm her constituents. I'm her constituents, Phil. Phil, I'm uh -huh. her, I'm one of her constituents technically, and quite yeah. frankly, I think she's doing fine. I think she's doing just great. Work. But the twenty-five thousand people. She's not a flash in the pan, see, Phil. Wait, 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 wait until count. you see. This woman yeah. is going to become a force in the Democratic Party. Yeah. I, yeah. 
just, uh, no, in no way. And uh, you've heard her constituents complaining. Yeah, and including uh, Pelosi. Pelosi, Pelosi is in her constituency. Not, well, it's forget, Pelosi forget that's Pelosi. running the show. Pelosi's going to make Pelosi. sure that she gets challenged by somebody that will fall in lockstep with them. Uh, and, now, uh, now, hey, no hey, this is a, you know, this is a new era of politics. You know, one, yeah, thing, about, the anti one thing about AOC is she has learned from Trump the ongoing political rally. Wait a minute. So who An have, wait a minute. And I, what have you heard? Anti-Semitic, anti Phil? How do you get yeah. that AOC is anti-Semitic? Well, uh, uh, Tal uh, the uh, uh, Talib and uh, uh, the, uh, the Somalian one in, in Michigan. Yeah. And AOC... Uh, she, she was being. Uh, they were talking about AOC that she was uh, twittering about her Netflix documentary and didn't say a word about the Christian church that, uh, that wait, got wait, shot. Wait, wait, but, but you yes, haven't shown me. You haven't shown me how oh, AOC is anti-Semitic. You haven't shown me how AOC is anti-Semitic. I'm talking about the new. Uh, no, said no, that there was uh, no, no. New how group, is she? How is group. she anti-Semitic, Phil? Maybe she's not anti-Semitic. In a fact, I believe. Am no, I not correct? Minute, I think. Wait a minute. Hold a on a second, Phil. Is not her boyfriend Jewish? No. He's uh, either Indian or or uh, something like that. It's the guy who stole the million dollars. Yeah, he's not <laughs> Jewish. But uh, the uh, Talib and the uh, and the other one are making anti-Semitic statements, and they're part they of that new crop. By the, the way, you know what's crop. wonderful tonight is I'm not out of sync, but you are. Yeah, it's the new crop <laughs> of... Uh, they are not of, making anti-Semitic statements. They are well, miscarrying... somebody miscarrying knocked the tower much, down. What they're saying. It was saying some, that I somebody. don't support the, the right-wing government of Israel. Oh, and, and the, the Jews, the Jews are buying the government. They're, 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 they're buying it. They're, they're buying the votes. Uh, no, no. The, the, the not, not one of them ever said that. Not that's one what. Of, that's what one the one the, the Somalian said. Saying that was Donald Trump. No, that's what the Somalian said. She said the Jews are buying the votes. And uh, and you know and uh, the, they sanctioned it. Uh, you know they, they they said that that was wrong. They wanted her to apologize, but they never took her. Phil, out you hear this out uh, stuff out of the side of That's your bullshit. out of your right wing press, and and you don't come up with a really That's coherent because, reason why she's. Well, you still haven't told press, me why she's anti-Semitic. Because of her statements about Israel and the Jews. I'll yeah, make those same statements about, about the Jews. about Israel and the Jews. I happen to agree yeah. with her. Yeah, well, well, that, I'm not anti-Semitic, am I? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm anti-Semitic. About APAC buying the government. Yeah. Well, you're a, and, you're uh, a Shonda. For, you're a Shonda for the goyim. And care doesn't buy the government. You know, they'll they'll just they'll just chop your head off if you make a uh, a, a cartoon. But, 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 but the by the way, are you still are you still cartoons. are you still there, Jack? I think uh, Jack. I, I think Jack left. left. Sure. Oh, okay. Well, then I quit. You know, the New York Times yeah, came up with anti-Semitic cartoons. We've got a problem with anti-Semitism, not only in Europe but yeah, in the United States. Donald Trump. Well, Donald Trump is far from an anti-Semite. Oh, I think he's, he is. I think he is. He's supported Israel. He's he's the Jew's best friend. No, if he's if, well, he's not this Jew's best friend. Let me say that right now. You know. Yeah. You know, uh, he uh, he's more pro-Jewish than any other president, especially Obama. Really? Yeah. Because be, all because of the Israel issue. Part of it. So, uh, Obama sent them more aid than all the previous presidents. Right. Uh, uh, I don't know that to be a fact. Well, it is. Well, it is. Look it up. Well, but, if, if you okay. can find those anti-Semitic anti statements, Phil, send them to me on Facebook, and I'll post them to the other GabNet Live. Okay, oh, yeah. you know the, uh, uh, okay, I, I will. Okay, anyway, hey, there's the theme. It, thank God it's playing. Well, we seem to have not been too much out of sync. The only person out of sync tonight has been uh, Phil, but then again, that's always the case. Tomorrow night will be a Phil-free night, so feel free to call. Uh, yeah. oh. Meanwhile, thank you, Phil, for being here tonight. Thank you, Eddie, for your uh, joining us. Uh, Tim, thank you. Thank you, Charlie, and thank you to Jeff. Those are all the fine people on our citizen panel. And if they would all wave goodbye, I'll wave back. Okay, there they all go. Right. 
All right. Okay. Good night. And uh, I'm uh, I'm out of sync until I hang up on these people for my video, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I will get back in sync. See how we we'll see how that happens? Is that not amazing? That would not happen with my with my new machine, but unfortunately, it's at being fixed. And what can I say? Anyway, that's it. Jack is next. I'm sorry I got rid of Jack kind of soon because. Uh, I really prefer people use Skype to call <clears throat> because uh, it does. It is, let's face it, mainly a visual program these days. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I do thank uh, Jack for calling as well. He is next with the intersection. I want you to stay tuned for that, and I want you to call him. He's next over most of the same gabnet tomorrow night at uh, 8:30 Eastern Time. It's the uh, the sports show, which is the arena with the franchise MC, followed by Damian Chaplin in the exchange. And then I'll be back here again, 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, as always, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.